Hey friends, welcome back. So today is definitely going to be more of a planner chat type video and I wanted to talk about the Hobonichi Weeks and possibly this this passport, um, this beautiful, let me, let me just put that one to the side for right now. <laughs> so I had been, you know, actively planning in here in my weeks for quite some time. I wanted to like stay on top of it. This is actually this past week. I was getting ready to plan in this week right here, starting the week of May. And I really got to thinking um, about a couple of things. Well, one is that I really, really love the weeks for so, so many reasons. Um, I even put up a video about like why you need to try this planner, right? Like it's truly one of my favorite planners. This isn't the first year that I've tried it. Um, I actually tried it several, several years ago for many, many months. Um, didn't stick with it for a whole year, but now that I feel like I have like better knowledge and a better feel for this type of paper, then it is something that I know that I could stick with for longer than a year. I've even like started using my notes pages again, started doing some daily pages in here. And this is where I started thinking that I needed to make a shift back to the mega weeks because I was constantly looking for something that had all three uh, well, I should say four, right? The annual page, the month at a glance, the week at a glance, and then enough room if I really wanted to, to do dailies all year long and additional notes pages. And the issue with the standard weeks, let me take this out of the cover. By the way, I am a hardcore like Moterm lover. Um, you can get them very easily from Amazon. They are beautiful and super, super affordable. Um, so this is the difference between the, the standard and the mega weeks here. And I don't know why my camera is like freaking out on me, but um, this is kind of where I've been, right? Because I really like the cover covers of the traditional weeks. I, I feel like they put the prettier covers on the standard weeks and then put like all of these like crazy primary colors or like colors that people don't really love on the mega weeks. And like, I love yellow. This is coming from someone who truly loves yellow, but I would prefer that my planner covers be neutral. So that's kind of where I was at. I was like, I don't like this cover. It's bugging the hell out of me. And then I was also using my cousin. So I really didn't need, at least I felt all of these notes pages. But then if you watch last week's planner chat video, I was even more all over the place. And I think that when I really sat down and thought about what I needed in a week's, it was going to be the one with more notes pages. So if we flip to the back of this one, like I literally have both of these set up the same way. I've got an area to have my goals in, even though I do all of my goal setting in Moxie Life. I like to have um, at least the high level overview with me at all times. And I have things like the adulting log. I think I got that idea from Lindsay Scribble. She's incredible. Um, a movie log, reading log, any new podcast I will have listened to, which by the way, it is now what, May? I, I haven't listened to anything else. <laughs> anything new. Um, I have like video ideas, people I've collabed with, social media highlights. I actually have a few that I need to jot down in here. I did like this uh, planner plan. I think I got this idea from Mackenzie. Started doing these habits from, oh my god, I don't remember her handle. It's like mom of two. I, I have to go back and look. I've credited her before though in a previous video. Um, I did things like this in here and absolutely loved it. But as I started using these pages, I was like, I don't have a daily. Like I could try to squeeze days in here, but I felt like I had to keep my lists extremely small, extremely small. And not that there's anything wrong with that. I just knew that some days my running to-do list could probably take up this whole damn page if it needed to. Started to put my April habits in here and then I wanted to get set up with May as far as my habits go, but I quickly got discouraged because I was like, wow, I'm on page 20 already and there's only, we're halfway through the year and I didn't even use this to its full capacity for January through April, but I've only got 55 pages left and that's not going to be enough when you really think about what I want to use this for. So the mega entered the chat. <laughs> um, I've had this the whole time. It was the initial one that I set up back in November when this one started, late November. 
and we can just kind of flip through um, some of these pages and I loved it again it was more about the color of the book which I know is like such a minuscule thing to like really get all bent out of shape about but I did um, and I used it through Christmas and through most of January um, and I think January is when I fell off and decided to go with this book right here and again, it really does come down to cover. And I think this is when I essentially stopped. I used one too many stickers and I got overwhelmed and was like, I'm out. <laughs> I don't really care to use a lot of stickers in my Hobonichi weeks. It's just not a thing that I care for. Um, so I have done some back planning, just a little, you know, transparency there. So I... It was actually a very rainy weekend this past weekend and I just got to work and I only have like, uh, let's see, I have one, two, three, four weeks to back plan. But I took care of most of February and all of March and all of April and I kept it exactly how it was already in this book minus like some colors for markers and washi. I wasn't going to go digging through my collection to make the pages look exactly the same. Like this was the week of Go Wild. There was nothing on this side of the page. There was really no need to have anything and I don't know that I want to chunk this up with photos from Go Wild when, there's, when that's already been done in my memory keeping um, bullet journal. So. And this is where we're at. I literally was like, I'm not going to like fake this and add more than what was actually on the pages in in this week's right here. So I just went back through, um, spent a rainy afternoon, <laughs> like literally back planning. I think we actually just talked about this on my last Friday Night Live, but you can tell the weeks, uh, like the end of March when I really started to get back into this because there's definitely more substance on these pages and I got back into my habit tracking the way I wanted to. Um, I just really like this format and keeping it like super minimal. I literally only used um, a couple of things and that was my favorite color, the Tombow N79. This marker is getting beat up, but one of you guys was really helpful and told me to put some um, tape over the number so that I wouldn't forget which one I was using. And I really just stuck to the N79, my Sarasa mark on, and every now and then I reached for my Pilot Vanishing Point. I absolutely love this for a fountain pen, but sometimes I get a little too heavy handed with this, and this is a fine nib. I should have have gone with extra fine um, but that's okay I will still use it here and there as needed so here we are through March the beginning of April again just copied over what was already in this week's minus any sort of extra decor that I added to the pages here was like the mid part of April and then here we are with these current weeks. The ones where I can tell when I use the fountain pen because I write a little bit more slanted um, was this week and then the current week that we are in right now. And again, I felt like it was a little bit too heavy and you can almost see like the bleed through on some of these because I do get heavy handed. I do get heavy handed with this pen. I think right now I'm not ready to spend the amount to switch out the nib. It's fairly, fairly pricey. So. I think that I'm not going to use this very often in here. I may use it more in like my notebook in the passport because that paper is a little bit thicker and it can handle the ink that's coming out of this pen. But yeah, you can see some like smudging and stuff. I need to catch up on my habits. These are the same habits that I put in my plum paper. So I just need to add them over here. And then here we are with this current week and you can see there's quite a bit of ghosting with that because again, I got a fine nib fountain pen instead of extra fine, ugh, lesson learned. Uh, my tabs are from Planner Monkey Co. in this planner. I never ended up putting tabs on this one. I think right there was an indicator that I wasn't fully committed to this book because I didn't even put tabs on it. I don't know. Um, and then we'll get to the back of the, pay back of the book, like all the notes pages and things. Again, everything's set up pretty much exactly like I even copied over my like little mini vision board situation in both books uh that's just how I roll have some notes in here for some like um 
like where I was, like milestones and things like that with all of my socials. I need to actually write them on the page. That would be great. Um, I never copied over like the video ideas, collabs, and social media highlights. Probably will do that this weekend. I'm kind of just going to map out giving myself a week to get everything moved over and then move on from there. Um, I think I, even at one point I broke up how many extra pages I would have. <laughs> I, I think I've shared this before. I'm not totally sure because I don't even remember when I wrote this down, but you get 219 pages. Um, one to 20 various annual trackers was going to be pages one through 20. And then every month uses two pages for a monthly tracker, two pages for bills and purchases, and eight pages is what I was giving myself for, um, daily bullet journaling and that would be 12 pages total making it 144 pages using 164 leaving me with 55 extra and as you can see that would have never worked <laughs> that would have never i mean it could work in here now because we're halfway through the year and i haven't used um all of those pages <laughs> It's kind of crazy how like we'll break things down like that, right? Again, I have like the, I copied over the planner plan in here um, and then I did some swatches of ink and I left it so that I had two pages because I really did not intend on buying more ink than this. And honestly, this is all that I have right now still. I don't know that I'm gonna buy any more between now and through the summer. Maybe in the fall I might get a few more, but I don't have enough pens to like fill all of these, use all of these inks, so it's gonna be okay. This is where I really fell in love with these back pages in the back of the Hobonichi Weeks was being able to do this. Um, like Again, I have some days that took up more space than others. Some needed only like four pages and some pages needed a lot more. Um, I ac had accidentally skipped a page, so I used it to swatch some pages in my planner um, just with some of my favorite markers and brush pens. I love the Zig Brushables pens, you guys. I love these so much and they don't take up like a lot of uh, real estate. Like they're not a bulky pen. Um, this is how big the body is like in comparison to a Tombow brush marker. So something to think about if you're interested in getting them. I really like them and I like the colors that they offer. And now I just realized I haven't even swatched all of them. I bought a few and then I went back and bought, uh, actually those aren't even the Zig brushables, are they? These are the right tech ones. Wrong pen, see? So I still need to swatch these in this book. <laughs> oh my goodness, okay. Um, and then I started back again, this was like around Christmas time with the daily pages. And this is kind of how I intend to use it again, maybe not with these really large um, date stickers. These are from Randy.Plans. I absolutely love, love her shop. It's where I get the majority of my stuff for my Hobonichi planners. And then I think that this is where things ended for me in December. And then I had started like a January tracker because I had gotten that idea from someone on Instagram and wanted to start that. And then I did like some bills and some order tracking and then more daily pages. I kind of preferred using these Randy Dot Plans stickers. I felt like they just weren't so like loud on the pages. Probably won't use that much washi and things like that in here, but I really liked the way that this looked and I'm kind of bummed that I just stopped. Um, I have a note here for a camera lens that I actually already purchased, so I can take that out. Um, and then this was the end or the middle of January and then I didn't finish, so I've actually got Got four months of unused real estate in here that I will probably make up for quite a bit moving forward with this book because this is only to page 35 and I still have all of these pages to work with and I think that that's what I want to do I say I think because you guys know like by by this afternoon I'll change my mind but I think I'm pretty set on this I've already invested enough time in moving some things over and I think what also gave me the idea was that I started doing just some like daily scribbling in this um, pocket notebook um, it's actually just one of the travelers company notebooks but instead of putting it in their cover i just ended up not using this anymore i didn't really find it to be very very functional like there's no pockets there's nothing i know a lot of people love these but for me i was like i need something that snaps closed that has pockets things like that this has four strings on it but what happened was i started putting down some dailies in here i don't hate this don't get me wrong <laughs> 
the thing is, is I was like, okay, so I'm going to have to definitely have both of these with me when I leave my house. Like I'm gone for work like eight, nine, ten hours a day. So I'd prefer to at very least have my daily with me. Well, then this is undated. So then I don't have any like reference with me. So that's where I was like, well, I could still keep this as a notebook. The pages are blank. There's nothing dated in here. I could use this for a ton of things. This will not go to waste. But that's how this kind of came back into play with the mega weeks is where I was like, this is how I can have my dailies, not feel the guilt of empty pages that I feel with the Hobonichi cousin, because this could just be used as needed, but also still have my dated options in the front as needed. I know that this makes sense to some of you that are watching this. <laughs> so that's where I'm at. I have a couple more things to move over. I haven't done like the monthlies. I don't put a lot of my monthlies anyway, so that will probably take me a total of a half an hour tops. I do use the year at a glance for some health things, so I never show it um, because again, you know, not everything needs to be on the internet. So I probably have maybe in total about an hour, hour and a half of work to do to move some things over. Um, I know some people are like, well, you don't have to move everything over. I just want to. It's a personal preference. I also love this vellum. I think this is from Planner Monkey Co. as well. It reminds me of Beauty and the Beast. It really, really does. It is absolutely stunning. All right, guys. So that is it for this planner chat about my Hobonichi weeks. I hope you enjoyed hanging out with me today. I can't wait to hear your thoughts down in the comments. If you enjoyed today's video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. If you're already subscribed, make sure you click that notification bell so that you know when my videos are posted here on YouTube. As always, thank you guys so much for hanging out with me, and I will see you in my next video. Bye, everyone. Thank you.